Well, hello everyone. Welcome, welcome to you all. Um, welcome to this our Sunday morning class. Uh, Sharon reminded me that we're um, it's been two years now since we've been uh, online and and uh, doing these um, since the beginning of the pandemic. So. Uh, quite a long time. We are um, we are talking about doing some in person. So maybe in the next month or so we'll do uh, an in person at uh, Iona where we began just before we had to stop again. We began in early 2020. So we'll keep you posted on that. And um, We um, so today, what I wanted to focus on was just you know what's happening in the world. I wanted to invite us to kind of bring our attention there. I mean, I think many of our attentions are, uh, uh, is already there um, with um, the situation in Ukraine and the suffering there of people. Um, acknowledging that you know there's much happening in other parts of the world as well but there's something that feels so um to me to, um unnecessary um you know basically a war of unpro that's unprovoked and yet creating such incredible suffering for so many people we've already seen a million people forced into you know, becoming refugees, leaving the country, many more displaced within within Ukraine. And so what I was reflecting on was that for me, and I think maybe for others as well, that at a time like this, when a lot of emotions are coming up, you know, I find, you know, a lot of sadness, a lot of grief coming up, a lot of, um, you know, some fear, some worry, some anxiety, some ang anger and outrage, um, you know, all of those, as well as, you know, more than those kind of hopeful emotions as well. You know, I think we've, we've all been inspired by the, by the courage of the, of the Ukrainian people. Um, um, and, you know, I was saying that um, that at a time like this, I, I come back to the practice, to the teachings, to the practices, and I particularly come back to the practices of of what are called the heart practices of loving kindness, uh, compassion, joy, and equanimity. What are called the, the Brahma Viharas, the divine abodes, the beautiful states of of heart. Um, that um that that help us keep our hearts open you know in um in difficult times and help us in many many other situations as well so um what i'd i'd, I'd like to kind of focus a good bit today on meditations um for hope for keeping our hearts open for opening our hearts and uh particularly these um these heart practices um, I'd, I'd, I'd be very interested in, in, you know, in hearing how you're doing, you know, how you're feeling right now generally, um, you know, in terms of your own life. We've all been through a lot of changes, you know, in this last two years, um, you know, with, the, with COVID and the, and the restrictions and all the changes to our lives. Um, and then, you know, with the world situation, um, that's kind of hanging weighing heavily i think on many of us and so if you feel you'd like to i mean please feel free to share in the in the chat do you know just how you're doing and kind of connect in 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 that way roberta says lighting the candle is a wonderful action yeah i mean hope
what we what we um, have been typically doing in terms of the format of the class is beginning with a beginning with a meditation and then um, having a, a talk short talk short to medium talk and then uh, Emily leads us in some movement. We come back and we do some sharing together and we finish with a meditation and some announcements. And we'll do some version of that um, today. Uh, and uh, with, with, I think, a strong focus today on, on practice, on the, on the meditations. And... Uh, Yeah, so let, let's begin with a with a set with the um, do a, a meditation to help us arrive. And then I think, kind of help open our hearts, cultivate an open heart, loving kindness and compassion. So find a find a posture that's comfortable and relaxed. So whatever that is for you. Sitting with your back straight, just invite the shoulders to relax. You could, if you like to, you can close your eyes, let your attention come inward. Letting your attention drop out of the thinking mode and just down into the body. So you might feel your body, feel the, the contact with the space the chair beneath you or whatever you're in contact with. Feel the weight of your body pressing down on your buttocks, on your thighs. You might bring your awareness to your breathing and consciously cultivate a few longer, deeper breaths. So a nice deep in-breath, filling the lungs, filling the chest. And then a long, slow out-breath, releasing, letting go. Breath is a great support for us in helping us come back into equilibrium, into balance, if we're feeling stressed or overwhelmed, just so we can come back, take some deeper, longer, deeper breaths. Breathing in, calming the body, breathing out, calming the mind. If you can let the breath help you settle and relax. Bringing you home. And as a way of connecting with the heart, with the emotions, you might invite a, a smile to your face. Think of someone who makes you happy, makes you feel joyful. If you can, maybe let their image come into your, into your mind, into your heart. And the smile can send a message to our brain, to our nervous system that we can 
we can relax, we can be at ease. You might invite the smile down into your heart, into your body, into your heart area. And let it be the expression of the attitude of how you want to meet whatever's coming up. So if you can meet it with a smile, with the expression, with the attitude of a smile. When you're ready, just opening to, to what you're experiencing right now in the body, in the heart, in the mind. See if you can make space for, for whatever is present. Welcoming the guests in Rumi's phrase. anything difficult or painful comes up, it can be helpful to put a hand on the heart, on your heart, maybe the other one on your belly, just caring for this, this life, this being, holding yourself in kindness, wishing yourself well. Whatever comes up, if there's an emotion, maybe there's some sadness comes up as you think about something you've seen or heard. See if you can hold that, make space for it. So allow it all the space that it needs. Let it come, let it be. And then when it's ready, let it go. Mm. Yeah. And if tears come, then that's okay. Just letting that be a release. holding yourself with kindness. Just letting the container of awareness and kindness be big enough to hold whatever's here so that it can come, that it can be here, can dance for a while and then when it's ready it can pass. We suffer when we 
struggle with our experience when we get hooked, when we try and hold on or we try and push away. So see if you can just invite this openness, <coughs> compassion, <coughs> so that nothing needs to be pushed away or hold up, held on to or avoided or escaped can all be here let your breathing keep you grounded, present, just breathing in, breathing out. See how it is to say yes to whatever is arising, whatever's coming up, whatever's present. Can you make room for this? Hold it with kindness. And let it go when it's ready. And holding whatever is present for you right now, you might send yourself some wishes and tensions of, of loving kindness. May I be safe and free from harm. <clears throat> May I be happy. May I be happy. May I be peaceful. May I live with ease and with kindness. silently say these phrases or your own phrases, whatever really touches you, speaks to you right now. But just that well-wishing to yourself, caring for your own well-being and happiness. May I be filled with loving kindness, held in loving kindness.
May I be kind to myself. Whatever comes up, see if you can meet it with loving kindness. With these practices of loving kindness, compassion, joy, equanimity, the most important thing is the, the intention, just having the intention of wishing well to yourself or to another or others. Maybe there isn't, aren't many feelings present and that's fine. It's like we're planting seeds seeds of caring, seeds of well-being, happiness. When loving kindness, when an open, caring heart meets suffering, the form it takes on is the form of compassion. It's caring, empathy, connection, and the wish to help. So if we think about the situation in Ukraine, or wherever, you know, it could be somewhere else for you, it could be another situation, it could be a person who's in difficulty, but whatever it is for you, just reflect on maybe images or reports you've seen or heard or read. And if you can, just let your heart open. Allow yourself to feel whatever is present. You might think of an individual or it might be a group of people. You might consciously send wishes of compassion and caring to them or him, her, them. May you be held in compassion. May you be held <coughs> in compassion. <coughs> Excuse me. May you be free from pain and sorrow. May you be at peace. Just letting these wishes go out to where where your heart, what your heart is open to right now, 
or where your intentions are directed. May you be held in compassion. May you, may you be free from pain and sorrow. May you be at peace. Remember, recall the report of a young woman who was escaped from the east of Ukraine to Lviv and the west on the west side, west, west of the country. And she told the reporter she'd been hadn't really slept for six days and was really kind of activated by the experience and obviously had really suffered with the bombs going off and everything around her. And the reporter asked her what, what she would like to, to say to you know, people listening. She said, I just, I was able to look up at the sky for a moment and feel some, feel some joy. She said, just to remember to people, just to remember to look at the sky, to remember, you know, even in midst the pain that, that there's beauty, and there's life. And the images of women giving birth in the basements of buildings, young nine, eight, nine year old boy an or who was already in an orphanage and 80 of these kids in the orphanage were moved from the, again from the east to the west, man managed to get away safely and were being well cared for, um, being taught and looked after. But he was, he was asked, you know, what it, what it, what, what he wanted. He said, I just want to die. He said, and it was so heartbreaking with the boy. Holding in whatever way feels right for you right now, holding in compassion those who are suffering. May you be held in compassion. May you be free from pain and sorrow. May you be at peace.
Just let your heart be as open as it can be right now. Just however it is, let just meet that with kindness, with acceptance. And just inviting the opening of the heart to suffering. And amidst the suffering that there's also there's also joy, there's inspiration. We see people acting with great courage, generosity, kindness. see the outpouring of of support from people ordinary people and aid workers in Poland and Romania Moldova Hungary and other countries throughout Europe and here in the US and Canada and around the world May you be held in compassion. <clears throat> May you be free from pain and sorrow. May you be at peace. The Brahma Viharas, these qualities of are said to be immeasurable and boundless. The more we open our hearts to ourself, to ourselves, to others, to, to life, to the world, the more capacity they have to open. Now, there's no limit. It's not like we reach a set number. Oh, this is the, the cup is full and there's no room. The more our heart opens, the more further it can open still. You know, if we don't get caught up in fear and then then we close again, but that's a natural thing and we can come back again, open our hearts, invite them to open. And, and really at the core of this practice is the intention of including everyone, all beings, in our wishes of loving kindness and compassion. And that can be a difficult one, you know, if we include Vladimir Putin you know, it's easy to see him as the other, you know, and there's tremendous harm that he's causing and choosing to cause. And the invitation is to not let anyone, not push anyone out of our hearts. And I was reflecting on this and I, 
I thought of two good reasons, not good, two reasons why, at least why it's important to, to include everyone, including those who are causing harm. And, you know, the first reflection is that I ask myself, do I contain, do I have within me the seeds of harm, of fear and hatred and anger that could cause harm to other people? And I, I know that I do. I know that those seeds are in me and I think in all of us and it's a question of you know what seeds we nurture which what seeds we cultivate give sustenance to you know do we give do we nurture seeds of kindness and compassion and joy or do we cultivate seeds of anger and separation and hatred and qualities that will lead to suffering. And I, I know that I have those seeds, both seeds within me and, and it's my choice and your choice and our choice of what we, where we put our attention and what we cultivate. So recognizing that, that You know, under other circumstances, under other conditions, I could be doing you know, very harmful things. And this is a practice, it's we it's a training and Everything has its season. It may not be the time to right now to open our hearts to someone who's causing such harm. But we can do this, that we can we can train the heart, expand the circles of caring to include all beings. You think of it with the Dalai Lama and is the compassion he cultivates for the Chinese leaders and authorities who've done such harm to his country and people, traditions. I imagine wishing Putin well, wishing that he be happy and safe and free from harm. And if he were happy and safe and free from fear and danger, then there's no way in which he could be causing harm. So if we wish happiness and joy, freedom from fear to those who are causing pain, then it would be, it would be for the benefit of all, for them to be happy and free from fear.
May you be held in compassion. May you be free from pain and sorrow. May you be at peace. The third of these qualities, these heart qualities, is, is joy, often spoken about as appreciative joy, joy in the happiness of another or others. And I've been thinking about this a joy in the kind of in the inspiration that, that, that I've felt, and I think many others have felt in just the courage of people defending their country and defending their freedoms. And how it reminds us in a time when it's easy to be cynical and jaded that there are things worth struggling for, preserving. And touching into that, that appreciative joy, you know, that sense of can be delight, it can be inspiration, happiness. I mentioned uh, Archbishop Tutu spoke about Nelson Mandela, he said, he made us feel good to be alive. You know, to know that, you know, courage like this and compassion like this is possible. And we think of those, you know, who've been willing to give everything for for the good of others, caring of others. I think of Dr. King, many others. Rosa Parks, John Lewis, so many. Courageous people who took a stand for rights of women, LGBTQ individuals, people. the rights of everyone to live freely, to vote, 
how that can be uplifting for our hearts. So remembering the joy that's possible even in the in times of sorrow and suffering. Remembering to look at the sky. Gil Fransdell, the Buddhist teacher on the West Coast, Spirit Rock, speaks of these qualities as the four faces of love, four faces of love, different expressions of love, depending on the conditions that, that we meet. The fourth is, is the quality of equanimity, of steadiness, of balance, evenness of heart and mind that really supports all the other qualities and equanimity right now i think is a quality that's really that we're really in need of to accept what we can't change. To accept that there are limits to what we can do without the situation turning into even more dangerous uh, the direction that can be very difficult I think it is difficult for all of us and we need the quality of equanimity of accepting the truth of of the situation, changing what we can change. WB Yates said, we can make our minds so like still water that beings gather around us, that they may see their own images, and so live for a moment with a clearer, perhaps even a fiercer life, because of our quiet. Equanimity prevents or helps prevent loving kindness from turning into a kind of attached, more craving kind of caring and wanting prevents compassion from turning into pity you know, where there's separation above and below so in these final few few minutes of the meditation just invite you to just let your heart be as open as it can be right now to whatever whatever you're caring about, concerned about.
Christina Feldman wrote that these practices, we incline the heart towards qualities that ennoble our lives. Incline the heart to qualities that ennoble our hearts. And the, <clears throat> the Buddha spoke about them as the best way of living in the world with these qualities and including everyone in our wishes of kindness, compassion, care. And we can bring these qualities to places of stuckness, of fear or aversion, just to hold our own experience with loving kindness, compassion. Christina Feldman says, it's returning again and again to the commitment and intention to abide in kindness and to befriend all moments of experience. Befriend all moments of experience. Letting yourself be open to whatever is present for you right now. And just letting the well-wishing go out in whatever direction it wants to go towards whoever, whatever person or group of people out into the world. how we meet the difficulties of the world and, and of our life is not a given. No, it's not an inevitability. We can choose how we respond. And the more we cultivate these qualities of kindness and care and joy and equanimity, the more we're able to meet whatever life brings with with an open heart it's a training it's a practice we keep coming back maybe we get caught again we contract and then we remember May I be happy, may I be safe. May all beings be happy and safe, free from suffering. Finish with Naomi Shihab Nye's poem, Kindness. Before you know what kindness really is, you must lose things. 
feel the future dissolve in a moment, like salt in a weakened broth. What you held in your hand, what you counted and carefully saved, all this must go so you know how desolate the landscape can be between the regions of kindness. How you ride and ride, thinking the bus will never stop. The passengers eating maize and chicken will stare out the window forever. Before you learn the tender gravity of kindness, you must travel where the Indian in a white poncho lies dead by the side of the road. You must see how this could be you, how he too was someone who journeyed through the night with plans and the simple breath that kept him alive. Before you know kindness as the deepest thing inside, you must know sorrow as the other deepest thing. You must wake up with sorrow. You must speak to it till your voice catches the thread of all sorrows and you see the size of the cloth. Then it is only kindness that makes sense anymore. Only kindness that ties your shoes and sends you out into the day to mail letters and purchase bread. Only kindness that raises its head from the crowd of the world to say, it is I you've been looking for, and then goes with you everywhere, like a shadow or a friend. So holding us all here together today in loving kindness, you might send out a wish of kindness, care, compassion to everyone here. May you be happy. May you be safe. May you be peaceful. May you live with ease and with kindness. Letting your wishes maybe go out into the world to all who are suffering, to all beings, may you be happy, may you be safe, may you be peaceful, may you be held in loving kindness, filled with loving kindness, may you live with ease and with kindness. Um, the um, what I shared was in some way a kind of combination of a talk and a meditation so I'm not going to do another talk um, but what we'll do is we'll um, if Emily is here, we'll invite Emily to lead us in some movement and then we'll come come back and do have some time for sharing together. Thank you, Emily. Thank you. Good morning. Let me invite you to stand up and just sway from side to side. You might lift a heel. The opposite heel is the way you turn, engaging in a gentle twist being kind to yourself as you just sway and feel the element of air against your hands and your arms and your face and then open up wide, extending up 
and reach up. Exhale, lower your shoulders from your ears and grasp your left wrist in your right hand. And inhale, reach out to the right. Exhale, tilt. You don't have to go far, but simply engage those muscles. Breathing into the left side of your rib cage. Exhaling and soften. And then inhale back to center. Switch wrists and extend out to the left and tilt, allowing that right side to open up your right rib cage spreading as you extend out to the left and come back to center. Float your arms down, roll your shoulders, both of them. And then roll them the other way. And draw your hands up into cactus arms. Exhale, lower your hands, keeping your elbows up. Inhale, rise. Exhale, lower. Last time, rise up. And then extend out. Taking a look at your left palm, your right palm is down. And on an inhale, switch over to the right side. And then the left, the right and the left. Turn both palms down and float your arms down and then move your shoulders independently, allowing the mobility of this very valuable joint, the shoulder. And then move them the other way. Now come to center and place your hands above your knees and extend out from the base of your hips out through your head in a flat back and then allow the pull of gravity to bring your arms, your head, your shoulders down into a forward bend. Breathing here and allow. You might inhale and lift your back a little and then sing with the exhale. Coming into a place of less effort, just giving and surrendering to the earth. And then bring your hands back above your knees and tuck your tailbone under as you roll up. Stacking the vertebrae, rising. Reaching, then bring your shoulders around your ears and exhale as you lower them, bringing your shoulder blades down your back. Inhale and reach your arms up once again into prayer position. Draw your hands down to your heart. And turn out to the group, greeting everybody with your energy. And then turn down to the earth. And exhale, reaching up again. Bring your hands above your head in prayer position and low. Coming back to the heart. Coming back to all of us. Down to the earth with an exhale. Whoosh. And then draw your hands to your heart feeling the energy inside, and take a bath. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. It's lovely to have a nice stretch and come into the body and do some sitting. So, See where we're doing at 1140. I'd love to, um, if 
folks would like to share in the chat what is alive for you, what came up for you, what you're working with, what you're, you know, what's what's helpful to you. Anything you'd like to um, like to share. Um, I'm thinking. Thanks for that, Cassie. IMS is doing a daily compassion practice the next two weeks from 12 to 12.15. That's great to know. Um, no, I'm pulled. I'd like to, I'd like to share together here. Yeah. Anyone like to share anything um, in the group as a whole? Anything, you know, that was meaningful to you? or any questions you might have, um, you know, about the practices, about working with, you know, difficulties in times like this. Um, um, so I was really struggling today. Um, and, and we talked about this in our small group. And um, so, you know, the with the teaching today, asking to hold Putin in loving kindness, which I'm absolutely capable of doing. That is that is not a problem for me. I don't, I very rarely feel hatred. So it's kind of easy for me not to, to have those emotions towards him. At the same time, you know, we talk about the courage of the Ukrainian uh, people defending their country. Um, but in that defense, there is more pain and suffering. There is the you know, what I consider the loss of innocent lives on the Russian side, the young men who are, are simply um, Putin's pawns, in my opinion, most of them. So it, to me, it feels like the teaching is, um, is kind of contradictory in some ways, you know, holding loving kindness, but at the same time, that causes so much suffering, you know? So, so I guess my question is, is it, uh, in my mind, I can welcome the assassination of Putin as a practical way to alleviate the suffering of millions of people. At the same time that I hold him in loving kindness, you know? So sometimes it feels like the practice is just asking for, um, for approaches that, essentially are just going to make me feel good and make me feel better on a personal level. And then I understand that if I feel better, I'm going to be um, uh, kinder to my family. My family will be kinder to their coworkers. It spreads out like that. But yeah, I'm struggling. I'm struggling to, with what I feel are contradictions, kind of. That's all. Thank you, Havali. Um yeah, I mean, and and I think I'd encourage you to just kind of sit with um, sit with the the contradictions, see if there is a um, a way of reconciling what you find the contradictions. I mean, what I would say about these teachings of the heart practice heart practices is that they are an invitation to really open our hearts to to all beings without exceptions and without conditions so it's not a favoring of some rather than others i mean if i speak about you know feeling inspiration experiencing some inspiration with people um acting with courage you know um defending their you know their country um you know I have certain views about what I think is the mo most helpful ways of doing that. And, you know, they're not easy to hold either because I am i don't believe in violence. <laughs> and yet, at the same time, um, I don't have any easy answers about what nonviolence in this period when you have an army invading does for you, you know, so I certainly have an understanding and my heart is very open to, to, you know, whatever, you know, people find the best ways of, of defending their loved ones, defending their country. Um, I, I choose myself the path of, of nonviolence, 
but I, I also see, you know, that in in a violent world that um, you know that that doesn't provide easy answers for people, and yet I do believe it's the way we have to go to um, you know to to create you know what um, what's his name Eisenstein called the more beautiful world we we know it know is possible. Um, you know, I, I don't experience the necessarily the same, you know, contradictions you do um, in in the practice, uh, in these practices. Um, maybe maybe it would be worth we could have a, you know, a longer discussion about that um, at, at another another time. Um, but I do I mean, I do feel these practices are they seem to me to be, as the Buddha said, the best way of living in the world. They are a way in which, you know, this, I think I said this maybe some other time, you know, friendship, not, <clears throat> friendship knows no enemies. When we're, when our hearts are open, then, um, then we don't create enemies, you know, that we can love everybody. And, you know, including those who are causing harm, you know, without justifying their, their harm, but to stay open to them too, to see that their harm comes out of not seeing things clearly, being confused, um, and wishing that they be free of suffering as well, so that, you know, they may live more, more, more happily too. I don't know if I've really got at the core of what you're, you're asking heavily, but um, th those are just some, some reflections that, um, that come to me, but thank you. Thank you. Gabriella, maybe we'll take you and then we'll, we'll have a meditation and some announcements. So thank you. Sure. I, uh, was saying with um, uh, Marina was with me in our in our, in our little uh, breakout group and um, that I was realizing my reduced capacity my uh, I just have a, a much much smaller bandwidth and uh, uh, finding that I need to take breaks um, many many breaks from um, even sitting with the discomfort and the feeling and lots of lots of feelings of powerlessness to alleviate um, suffering. Um, I have a little dog right now that's having a lot of issues and she's had to go back and forth to the emergency room this last week. And so that, you know, along just the just the powerlessness of alleviating others suffering, regardless of who, where, what kind of being they are. Um, and the sadness can it was feeling quite overwhelming at one point. Um, but I, what I was saying is that I, I have taken quite a few moments to, we've got bird feeders here, and that sometimes finding difficulty sitting um, and feeling, and really just like I'm finding that I have to take a break even from, uh, from, from, from sitting with the feelings and go and and be out in nature and look at the birds at the feeders and look at the I've got doves out here on the ground and see the baby birds fluttering and asking for food and looking at the flowers blooming and the hummingbirds flying and the parrots which we have here wild parrots that I think we used to have only a four and now we have 15 in a group and seeing how they continue on right? They have their life free from all of this. Um, and that brings such peace and beauty to me that sometimes I just, I can't be in the world of humans. I just cannot. I cannot be in the world of humans. It brings me so much distress. <laughs> That's where I am. Um, thank you. You. Thank you, Gabriella. And yeah, I mean, I think what's really important is to honor our own feelings and our own experience and to kind of feel our way into what will be most helpful to us. So if we're feeling really, um, you know, contracted or shut down or helpless to to really make space for that and and as much as we can bring kindness self-compassion in take the breaks we need go out into nature all of those things 
I think our tendency is with our minds is like, I should be doing this. I should be responding in this way. I should be helping. I should be, you know, finding ways of getting involved, etc. And, you know, there's a season for it. And if where we are right now is we're at, you know, a more contracted or a more difficult place, I think it's really important to make space for that and to allow it and to, you know, and, and the more we do that, the more we can find our, our ways to letting our hearts open. But I don't think it can be forced, you know, and I, I think um, I'd sell, I think taking care of ourselves is really important and in, in, in finding a way there. So, so I think what, you know, it sounds like what you've been doing, it's been, you know, you've been in a difficult place in some ways, but you found within that some, you know, some real, some real beauty and some, some opportunities for opening. And so there's some, you know, some real um, gifts in that and some real insight in that. So thank you for sharing that, Gabriella. Um, I'm, I'm looking at the time and thinking we should, we'll have a, a, just a very short final meditation, um, just a couple of minutes to touch in with where we are right now. And then we'll have some announcements to finish. So just take some moments. You could close your eyes and let the attention come in. We'll just see, touch into where, how you're feeling right now. Just notice, you know, has anything shifted, opened, closed, whatever in the, in the time we've been together. And just meeting whatever is present for you with, with kindness and with care. You know, you might ask yourself, you know, are there ways that you can take care of yourself? You know, to be as resilient as you can be in, in these times. There's some things you might be doing more of, more of getting good sleep or be going out into nature, whatever. You know, making sure that kind of the this vessel, this being, this consciousness is as 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 resilient as it can be. Is there any way that that your heart could open more? Are there reflections? Are there ways you can connect with the suffering of others in ways that are helpful that don't lead so to closing down but to lead help allow you to keep your heart open or as open as it can be or anything are there any things any ways you might engage that might bring the action element of compassion out so how can i help what might i do you know it could just be it could be sending loving kindness and compassion out into the world it could be making donations it could be getting involved with some volunteer activities of pushing for a particular response. Maybe for taking in more refugees here as Europe is doing so open-heartedly, warm-heartedly. And just appreciating uh, the gift of, of Sangha, of being together and supporting each other in our in our practice in this difficult time time that may get even more difficult in the coming days as the, the war expands and moves into kiev kiev more people leaving their homes just keeping our hearts open to the suffering, 
and the suffering beyond beyond this region, that region, other areas of the world. You might breathe in a wish of compassion and care for yourself. And as you breathe out a wish of kindness and compassion for the world, the suffering world. This poem I've shared before from Muhyiddin Ibn al-Arabi. There was a time I would reject those who were not of my faith, but now my heart has grown capable of taking on all forms. It's a pasture for gazelles, an abbey for monks, a table for the Torah, Kaaba for the pilgrim. My religion is love. Whichever the route love's caravan shall take, that shall be the path of my faith. Whichever the route love's caravan shall take, that shall be the path of my faith. Thank you, everyone. Um, I just want to mention a couple of things that I have coming up, a few things I've got coming up in the next few weeks, months. Um, I'm going to be teaching a course on the four heart practices, these four faces of love, beginning on March 29th, Tuesday evenings for seven, seven Tuesdays, March 29th through May 10th still some you know spaces open for that so i'd love if you could join me for that join us um i've got an insight timer workshop on march 19th um, on poetry for meditation and contemplation and if you're interested in that let me know um, it's a three-hour workshop there um, rebecca and i are teaching a retreat the weekend of may 6th through 8th there's still some spaces open for that it's in person so if, if you're looking forward to getting back to in person there's an opportunity and also a retreat in ireland i know some of you are joining us on in mid june um, in the west of ireland so if you're looking to get away that would be a, an opportunity for to do that so I'll pass it over to um, I just I mentioned um, to that, as you know, there's no cost, no charge for the classes, but you're invited if you're able and if you're inclined to make a donation as the practice of dana or generosity, which is really the heart of the Buddha's teachings and practices. And uh, Dan has put up in there the different ways that you can make don donations is how the teachings have come down through 2500 years and it's a beautiful practice that we're committed to keeping alive in a very different culture in a very different world um, i hope today has been helpful to you in terms of um in terms of these the practices of the heart and how they can support us in such a, a difficult time that we're we're living through living in um, I hope you have a great week, a uh, good week ahead, and uh, look forward to seeing you next Sunday at the same time. And um, blessings to everyone, and see you soon. <laughs>